biggest bands of the 80s. And they've never changed, you know. They're still a bunch of pricks. Two of its leading figures were brothers Gary and Martin Kemp. No! Oh, my God. Two years ago, I made an Academy Award-winning documentary about them. Can we shoot this again, please? Now they're back. He's in those goggle box. And this time, I was given unlimited access to follow them for a whole year. It's Martin Kemp. What's he doing in your house? With the help of hidden cameras, we'll eavesdrop on Gary and Martin's most private conversations day... Good morning, gal. You want some puffs? And night. <laughs> I follow them as they make a biopic. Who's directing this? Me? You? Former supergroup. Whoa, whoa. And much more. That knighthood is mine. You tell him to turn it down. This is The Kemps. All gold. I've come to Barnet to meet Martin Kemp at the home he shares with his two wives, Pepsi and Shirley Kemp, their nine children and two Dobermans. Who didn't check their pockets before they put their jeans in the Zanussi? There is tissue fluff everywhere in there. Now look at you, you're all still in your pyjamas. You've got to get out and do some exercise. You're going to get fat hearts, all of you. Get yourself together. All right? Uh, don't show any of this. I, I, I don't want people to know that I'm sleeping in here. No, 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 we won't show any of that. We won't show any of the garage. So, Martin, since we last met, it's been very well documented in the press that you and Gary are no longer on speaking terms. Where did it all go wrong? Well, I'd say it all began when I wrote my autobiography, didn't it? Earlier this year, Martin released his whinge memoir, Afterthought. For some reason, it really pissed Gary off. I mean, I guess he just didn't like the truth. Of all the books about Brothers at War released in 2023, Afterthought was definitely the most sensational. The big shock, I suppose, is you say that at one point your brother comes round and you have a fight. Talk me through that appalling, horrific evening. We were in the kitchen. Gary was ranting and raving about Pepsi and Shirley. He said that Two Wives was greedy. I disagreed with him. You know, he went absolutely ballistic and then he, he just attacked me with a dog bowl. It was really messy. I mean, it was chum up the wall, it stank. Do you think that you and your brother will ever talk again? You'll have to ask him that. You know, I mean, he's moved to the country now. This is Kemp Grange in the Suffolk town of Bungles, Gary Kemp's new home. Reese, yes. could you push me into the lake? During lockdown, Gary swapped his hectic London life for this scruffy 800-acre farm. Oh, no! OK. Oh, I'm sorry. It's all right. So, Gary, let's begin with your relationship with Martin. Um, uh, oh, uh, I know. I, uh, I knew you'd do this. Um, I told you, it, it's off limits. I haven't even seen his book, let alone read it. Mm. I haven't watched any of the interviews. Can we talk about Spandau the Ballet? You say you haven't read his book yet. There's a, there's a copy of it behind you. I also know you watched the programme because I checked your Sky planner and I saw it said, Martin, the interview with Tom Bradbury, viewed. And you live on your own, so I don't think anyone else would have watched it. Look, the relationship is over. I mean, it's not only our relationship he destroyed. I mean, ask his wives. Michelle, Michelle, what we're filming. You, what, we're filming what now. What have you said? The kids are all in there in tears. You've accused them of all being fat. I never said they were fat. I said they'd get fat hearts if they didn't do any exercise. That is very different from being fat. Then you accused them of leaving tissues in their washing. Well, whose jeans are these? Well, they're mine. Check the pockets. Pepsi and I have had enough. We need you to sign this. Shall okay. Look, you, we need a witness who's not in the family. Can you, can you sign that for sure, me, please? Sure, sure. These are divorce papers. Yeah. Pepsi and I cannot do this anymore. Can't do what? No one wants you, Martin. No one wants you anymore. Why? Because I don't want fluff in my pocket. Your hard work. The other day, Pepsi came down in that lovely dress. What did you say? Pepsi, you look a bit fat in that. I didn't you say did. she was fat. You did. I just said I was worried about a fat heart. Oh, no, this is what he says. Everyone's got a fat heart. That's his way of getting around calling you fat. He did you call me fat? I didn't call anybody fat. Why are you worried about everyone's um, fat heart? Because I am. I played a heart surgeon in a Linda LaPlante. Do you remember that? Oh, my God. Do you God. remember? You're an actor, Do you remember that? in a What happened in joke? the end? I don't know. You tell me what happened. They all died of fat hearts. We're done. Thank you.
For the 43rd anniversary of Spandau Ballet, Gary has been working on a groundbreaking new project. Spandau, colon, the ballet, is a ballet set to our music, and we're premiering it one year from now, right here. This whole area will be a state-of-the-art performance space and cultural hub. This will be Spandau Valley. Right, that's me done. I'll get the drawings done, chuck in a few gender-neutral toilets and a car park made of bark chippings to keep the council happy. It was at that point Gary received an unexpected visitor he didn't expect. Look what this place stinks of turnips, doesn't it? All right, gal. Was it a shock to see Martin again after all these years? Of course it was a shock, you know. I wanted to kill him. Uh, but blood is thicker than water. Is it, though? What? Well, is blood actually thicker than water? Doesn't it depend on where, where you live and whether you've got soft or hard water? I, 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 I don't know. You can't just turn up like nothing's happened. You know, look, girl, I've come here to say that all-important four-letter word. Sorry. You know, I'm sorry about what was in my book. You know, but I had to get my truth down on paper, and now my truth is on paper. It is not sitting on my chest like a, like a leopard. The truth is, you stitched me up in that pathetic excuse for a bargain bin book. The truth is, you're only here because you want something. I know you. Come on, what is it? Pepsi and Shirley kicked me out. They, they want a divorce, Scout. I don't care. You're not staying here. I, I've got nowhere else to go. I don't care. Gal, I'm totally skinned. I've only got fluff in my pockets. <sighs> Fine. Gal, gal, you remember when we were kids? Eh? And you spelled out right being over mum and dad's white sofa? Right. I didn't grass you up, did I? No, they took it out of my pocket money for months. I will never grass you up once. I, I, and I'll give you a couple of my kidneys. I've only got four left now. All right, you can stay. Gal, you won't even know I'm here. I swear. Forgiveness is a wonderful thing. At the end of the day, blood is thicker than water. Is it, though? Morning, gal. You want some puffs? Fucking hell. Could build your extension with that. It's six o'clock in the morning. I know. Roman's on the radio, isn't he? I listen to him every morning, right, every second of every hour, every day. You're his uncle, don't you? Yeah. You know, what, what are we doing today, then, gal? Chess at World of Adventures? I've got a two-to-one early bird pass. I'm working. Oh, yeah. You're doing that ballet shit, aren't you? It's not ballet shit. Gal, it is the 40th anniversary of our biggest selling record ever. We can't just celebrate it with some poxy ballet. We've got to do something proper. Ballet is proper. No, I'm talking about proper, proper. Maybe we could go out on tour again. <sighs> I've moved on, Mark. There's nothing fresh about a bunch of 60-year-old blokes singing songs from 40 years ago. I mean, it's tragic. Well, it pays well. It's not just about the money, Mark. You want to pay for your divorce, don't you? No. It could be great promotion for your ballet. Really? You know, we could have the first half as the ballet, right? And then the second half, the band come on and rock the place. Let's call John. Right, he'll know what to do. Hmm. All right, then. Got any wheat picks? February. Gary and Martin have come to London to meet their manager, John Farrow. Do you need help with your bag, sir? Oh, fuck off. John represents some of the biggest names in the business, including Madness, Chris Rea, Wind from Earth, Wind & Fire, Banana Rama, Thotch, and, of course, Spandau Ballet. I took him on in 2017 when their original manager quit the business because he was sick of the bickering. Two months after I signed them, they split up again and they've done fuck all ever since. I make more money out of their tribute band. They were great, actually. Spit an image, the real thing. Can't tell them apart. What's all this about, then? Make it quick. I'm playing squash in the now at Tanita Tikram. Look, it's the 40th anniversary of Trude this year. No one's doing anything about it. We need to mark the occasion properly. Now, I keep telling him we are doing it properly. I'm doing Spandau Cole on the ballet, remember? Gary. The country is fucked. It's heat or eat. Not heat or fork out over 60 quid a ticket to watch tits in tutus flit about to orchestral versions of your greatest hits. Exactly. We should be back out on the road doing an anniversary tour. Play the whole of the true album back to front. It's funny you should say that. 
I just took a call from BBC One about a big band concert they do New Year's Eve, you know, bands pass their sell-by date rocking the New Year to a backdrop of shit fireworks. Terrible money, but gets a fuckload of viewers, especially after the bongs. And they've asked us? No. Oh. <clears throat> but I did suggest you, and they did seem keen. Last year it was uh, Sam Ryder, wasn't it? Who? Sam Ryder, the Timotei Viking TikTok twat, Eurovision reject. Hey! Him. He's only got one song. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, I know. He sang it 12 fucking times. Audience too pissed to notice. Hey, yeah, 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 yeah. Anyway, they want something bigger this year. A spanned out reunion. It'll be just a ticket. We're not getting back together, never. It's a matter of principles. <sighs> Jesus, Gary. This is not the Good Friday Agreement we're talking about. It's a fucking 80s pop band. Unless you sort it out of Tony, I can't do nothing for you. What about a hologram? Singer usually has to die first, don't they? Yeah. It's one other option. If you can't reform the whole band, you do a mashup with the leftovers, another one. Back in the day, I had a string of very successful bands who fused and toured the globe, sort of like a mad science experiment. Rick Fly and Busted became Mick Busted. Mick Hucknall and Marty Pello became Simply Wet. And of course, there was Dire Straits and Chris Rea. Less said about that, the better. Who would we team up with? I mean, Tony's a hard act to follow. Simon Le Bon, Duran Duran, still huge all over the world. They sing some of yours, you play some of theirs. Women of a certain age would shit their pants to watch you lot on stage together. You could crowd surf on a sea of bingo wings, trust me. No, they hate us more than our own band do. We need someone contemporary. I mean, who's the biggest act right now? Harry Styles. Up uh, Spandau Harry. Yeah, perfect. I'll have a word with Harry, and then I'd better crack out some sponsorship deal. I'll call Femfresh. They'll jump at this. What's Femfresh? Some deodorant for women, like downstairs. Shirley gets it on Amazon Sub. Oh, Martin. Fucking cancelled it now, haven't I? March. It's been six weeks since Martin moved in with Gary at his Norfolk home, and already cracks are beginning to show. Hang on, I've lost you. Hang on, yeah, hang on. Gary, where can I get a good signal around here? N down by the river. Have you got me now? Could you give me a bit of peace? Have you got me? Uh, have you got me now? Please. Now? Morning, mate. We've just finished a job in the area and wondered if you needed any work doing. No, I'm fine, thanks. Your stable's in a right pickle. That road could collapse any second. We could sort that out. Thanks, but I want to ask around. I'm waiting for planning permission. I know all the planners. Seriously. You won't find no one cheaper than us. See, we don't charge for VAT. So that's 20% cheaper before we've even started. Why don't we come in and talk about it over a cuppa? Excuse me. Oh, hang on, I've got you. What? We you talking about child support? Child, child support? They should be supporting me. Yeah, look, I'm not working right now. Oh. No, I can't. I can't do it. Yeah, I'll call you back. <sighs> Ross? Hello, bruv. Oh. Ross Kemp, not that one, is Gary and Marty's long-lost brother. They were reunited on the TV show, Who Do You Think That You Are? Gary has now employed Ross as an environmental ranger on his estate. What are you pissing in that for? Because the toilet's too far away. You do it in there. No, Gary won't let me. Fergal Sharky goes fishing round here. And if he catches me pissing in the river, he'll do his nut. What's he got to do with Fergal Sharky? He's gone all Rico warrior now, hasn't he? People will not go swimming today because they've spent all night dumping shit into that bitch. You do it on the grass, then? No, my pee's far too acidic. It'll really mess up all the soil. Anyway, bruv, what was that phone call about? It's divorcing two wives, isn't it? <laughs> Fucking Pepsi and Shirley bleeding me dry. How would you like to earn 85 quid in 30 seconds? without even lifting an ass cheek. We've renovated stables into granny flats, games rooms, recording studios, so I'm pretty sure we can handle a 100-seater ballet space with ample parking, mate. What about the ecology report? I've got someone who can do that, and they won't charge you through the leaking roof either. Will they? No. Nope. Well, give me an estimate, and uh, we'll take it from there. Sweet. Here's me card. Uh, what the fuck is that? That's wonge milk. It smells like it's come out of goat's chuff. I ain't ever heard of an animal called a wand. It's fungal. Oh. 
Do you remember that Ice T, the rapper? Yeah, yeah, I remember. Well, I bumped into him in the co-op the other day. Oh, no. He's not a trolley wally, is he? I tell you, this business can be cruel. No, no, no. His trolley was full up with that cook gear. And that ain't cheap. It's 18 quid for a roulade. And that's a lot of buds for a bit of frozen egg white. He's been earning £85 every five minutes, and that's more than Bill Gates. How's he doing that, then? Well, he's doing this thing called cameos. This is a cameo, all right? It's a personalised video message just for you. What he does, he sends messages to punters that put in these requests. It could be a birthday, it could be a wedding, a funeral. Well, I'm going to start my own one. And I thought, you, bruv, could be my first client. I, um, I don't know about that. I mean, it's a bit low rent, isn't it? Not low rent enough for Linda Lusardi. She's getting 35 quid a message. You could double your price if you do a saucy one. <laughs> Go on, then. I mean, what have I got to lose? You weren't put off from buying this house? Why? Because of what happened here. What do you mean? Oh, mate, they couldn't give this place away. It was on the market for five years. The owners who had it before you bought it from a little old woman. Now, when she died, she melted into her chair. Like a human fondue. Heat wave, see? They think she had a fall and couldn't get back up. Starved to death where she sat. Took her a long time to die and all. By the time the police arrived, she was just a smudge. Where did she die? Right where you're sat, mate. They say this place is cursed by a witch who lived here during the witch trolls. They burned her in the pond. And I want you to record something onto my website, starmessage.org. Yeah, it's on his him. Oh, it's him on Gogglebox. Hey, that's Martin Kemp. What's he doing here? <laughs> Mark! Gogglebox. She has no idea of all the great things you've done, man. Do you think I could get a message from me mum? She's been a bit sick lately. Uh, really cheer her up. Yeah, of course I will. What's no, no, no. Whoa, 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 whoa. You've got to go who's, through the proper channels. Who's he? It's 85 quid through starmessage.org. Ross, his mum's ill. Yeah. Business is business, Martin. Sorry, mate. 85 quid, then. I can't afford that. How about a free chimney sweep in exchange for the message? That is 85 quid. Done. Oh, uh, well, no, wait a minute. I ain't got a chimney. Ornamental wood burner? I ain't got one of them, neither. A window clean? I ain't got no windows. How do you not have windows? I live in a wigwam. Come on. Can't believe it. It's Martin Kemp. What's he doing in your house? It's April, and Spandau Ballet manager John Farrow has a dramatic proposition for Gary and Martin. You should be thinking about your own Spandau biopic. Queen made a billion dollars at a meeting with Sony this morning. They want more. No brainer. Brilliant. Love it. Uh -huh. oh, yeah. Excuse me. Um, I've got something really. Really important, I've got to do. Hey! Hello, Cindy and Pete. It's Martin Kemp here. Happy anniversary, guys. 17 years. Well done. Uh, lots of love from Katie, Joe, and all your friends at the BP Garage in Gorky Park in Romford. P.S. The slush puppy machine needs more ice, so if you can get on with that, see you later. <laughs> What's that about? Oh, don't knock it, girl. It's 85 quid. It's more than I've earned all year. The biopic. Brilliant idea. I don't know. I'm not sure. You know, Freddie, Elton, Whitney, I mean, they, they had tragedy, addiction, sexuality stuff. Spandau haven't got any of that. Well, make it all up, then. Nobody cares. I mean, in all the best biopics, lead singer either gets fat, ill or shot. You could do all three. Give Tony incurable mumps or something. They'll have him assassinated at Live Aid. Great finale. But none of that happened. So what? I mean, all your albums chart again, even the shit ones, and you tore off the back of it. I've got 20 Russian oligarchs out there need to lose money fast. If you can turn the script around before the end of the tax year, you're laughing. Leave it to me. We'll need a proper writer. Well, I've written 60 films. Yeah, but none of them have been made. Exactly. My luck's got to change. There weren't any shit ones. Here's your scripts. Draft one. What, 
You wrote that in three hours? Yeah, absolutely perfect. Don't need to change a word. What's that? Fructus. Avocado coconut. You can't use that here. It's got chemicals in it. It's really bad for the river. What do you wash your hair with, then? Eggs. Eggs? Yeah, eggs. They're not only good for your scalp, they're good for the river, too. The only thing is, you can't have the water too hot, otherwise you end up with omelette in your hair. You take the piss. Here you go. Shampoo. Conditioner. Thanks. Gal? Who's that noise? It's just the timber. It, it creaks all the time. You know, I keep thinking about that witch in the pond and that woman who turned into a pillow. You don't think your house is cursed, do yeah? I'll tell you who's cursed. Me having to share a bed with my 61 year old brother because he's scared of witches. Just don't wet the bed. It sounded like someone was in the stables. It's just an owl. Put tearing the bins out. Well, they're very wise. Oh, yeah, I've got to go and have a look. Gal, let's just leave it. Let's go back inside. No, no, no. It might be an animal at my wunch. Oh, there's definitely something in there. I heard it. It's ah! Ah! What are you doing here? Batwatch. The ecology report, remember? I thought I'd pop over on the off chance. You have to take bats by surprise, see? They're the most intelligent of all the upside-down animals. I thought you said you knew someone. Yeah, I did. You're looking at him. I've got level one in mammals, birds and amphibians. Well, have, you, have you seen anything? This place is like a Terry Nutkin's wet dream. You've got every rear bat known to man roosting in here. What does that mean? It means you can't touch a bleeding brick, mate. Now, what about my cultural hub? That's so unfair. Uh, all right, all right, look. I could pretend I didn't see anything. My name will be mud in the bat world, but it's worth it for your ballet. Ow! <laughs> what was that? Squirrel. In May, Gary and Martin appeared on BBC4's groundbreaking TV show, Backwards Britain. They were one of many celebrities who walked from Land's End to John O'Groats backwards, and it was a smash. Walking backwards might seem crazy, but the health benefits are mind-blowing. Yeah, you burn more calories than walking forwards. It improves your mood and enhances your sense of spatial awareness. Yeah. Ah, ah, ah. Ooh. Gal, you all right? <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Earlier this year, Gary relaunched his vegan food range, Wonge, in the new Wonge box. Yeah, we had a bit of trouble back in the day with my meat substitute, Wonge. It's basically a fungus. What they were eating was, in fact, 65% meat. But we've tweaked the product and we are relaunching Wonge. But in June, scientists linked the high density of oestrogen in Wonge milk to male lactation. I spoke to one of the victims who was taking Gary and Wonge to court. Wonge milk has ruined my life. I'm leaking all the time. Gary Kemp has got milk on his hands. That was his real voice. Ross, we're going away tomorrow. Look after the house. Get rid of all the fucking Wonge. I had a sniffy letter from Trading Standards following that inquiry. But here's some money. I want you to do it properly, OK? Don't worry. I'll do it ecologically. I'll thumbberg the fuck out of it. Paul! Yeah? We're going to London for a few months working. Um, the key's in the lockbox. Ross knows the number. No worries, mate. We'll just crack on here. Old oh, Anton's going to be making a start on the roof today, ain't you, mate? Yeah. That in this scaffolding? Scaffolding? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. We don't need none of that safety rubbish. We've left me, are you? Yep, and the whole job will be done by the time you get back, I promise. It's day one of filming the Spandau Ballet biopic, Gold. Director of the film is Hollywood hotshot and press gang star Dexter Fletcher. Dexter, no stranger to biopics. He directed the Elton John one, the Eddie the Eagle one, 
And when Brian Singer turned out to be a wrong and he stepped in to save the Queen one. It's more of a favour. I used to know them when we were very... I, I idolised them when I was a kid, looked up to them. They were, they were very enigmatic men. I don't know quite what's happened, but there you go. In a cinema first, Gary and Martin will be playing themselves in their own biopic. You know, we auditioned so many actors to play us, but none of them really had what it takes, so we decided to do it ourselves. So, Dexter, how are you going to make Gary and Martin look 40 years younger than they actually are? Well, it's the techniques they used in the new Indiana Jones film when they make them look younger, and it's a series of dots on the actor's face to make them look like their younger selves, and that's what the motion capture dots do. If we use too many dots, well, then they're going to look too young. And if we don't use enough dots, then they're going to look too old. The trick of it is, is getting exactly the right amount of dots. Playing Gary and Martin's on-screen mum is Martin's off-screen dead ex-wife, actress Tamsin Althwaite. EastEnders fans will remember her from EastEnders. Well, how much do they want, then? Oh, Pepsi wants half of everything. Shirley wants half of everything. That leaves me with... Nothing of everything. Oh, mate, you're going to have to go back to Enders. I can't go back, though. They blew me up. You know, I died on screen. I'm fucked, tonight. <laughs> Same here. What, you're dead as well? Yep. What happened to you, then? Got hedgehogged by an Eddie Stobart. <laughs> Fuck. Yeah, no coming back from that. Yeah. Do you know, sometimes I wish I ticked the option that said he goes off to Costa del Sol, start a new business. Yeah. Tell me about it, love. Yeah. Now I'm just reduced to doing bit parts in shit films like this. No offence. 75, take one. And Q Tasman. What do you mean you're leaving school to form a band? What about your woodwork? We don't care about our woodwork, Mum. Yeah, we want to make music, not shelves. Who's that? That's Tony. He's going to be our lead singer. Tony Hadley, that beanpole from your school, give over. He's got the best voice in Britain, Mum. You wait till you hear it. Ready, boys? How did you prepare for the part of Tony Hadley? I didn't. Right. Have you met Tony Hadley for research? No. Did you study any Tony Hadley videos or watch any of the, the interviews? No. Right. Have you tried to copy his voice? Nope. Are you going to sing? No. Are you a fan of the band? No. Right. So why have you done it? Better than playing taxi drivers and doctors, isn't it? Where are you going dressed like that? The Blitz Club. The what? It's a bar in Soho. I know what boys like you get up to in bars in Soho. Your father would turn in his grave if he was dead. No, you don't understand, Mum. We're going to form a band. We're going to create a whole new movement. What kind of a movement? Oh, it's so new and romantic. I haven't even got a name for it yet. That's it. That's what we should call it. The New Romantics. Wait, wait. Um... You know, I, I, I've never been happy with that line, you know, cos Tony never came up with the phrase New Romantics, you know. I mean, I'm not really happy with him saying that. No, but Dexter did the character polish girl. Who's directing this? Me? You? <clears throat> Me, innit? Yeah, you. Yeah, look, look. It's starting to get embarrassing, so you better buck your ideas up really quickly, cos I will get on the phone to Tom Hardy like that. He's dying to do your part. Yeah. And yours. And yours. Mm. You. Beautiful. Can we go again? We have to come up with a better name for our band. The cut isn't right. We need something more avant-garde, you know? Something for the 80s. Gary, Martin, in here, quick. I think I've found the name of our band. And it was in front of my balls all this time. The Pope's a cock? No, you can't have that. It's too controversial. Yeah, Swap Shop wouldn't like it. No! That we'll call our band Spandar no, Ballet. Cut, cut, cut. Dexter what? loves oh, like girl. Sorry, what? I can't let this happen. Oh. Look, Tony coining the phrase New Romantics, one thing, you know, but, but coming up with the name of my band, I mean, that's going too far. This is your fault. Mine? Yeah, you wrote the script, you made Tony the hero, and I, we're like a couple of knobs on the sidelines. He did the script polish, girl. Look. Part of the deal was that Adil gets to have all the pivotal moments. He's casting his ices, his premium bonds. Yeah. You know, he's paying for the catering and the animal handlers. If it wasn't for him, we'd all be starving and there'd be no fucking ducks in this movie. Dex, I've got an idea. Yeah. You know, in all the good music biopics, right, the main guy mm -hmm. always dies at the end. Yeah. Heroically. Yeah. You know, you're right, because the ending is shit. It is. OK, go with this, right? So the Russians, they want to assassinate Geldof. 
right? Yeah. Adley's character spots him in the crowd, right? Bloke with a rifle. He runs across the stage right at the moment. Bang, the shot rings out. The stadium goes quiet. He dives. Whoa, slow motion. Boom, takes the bullet straight to the heart. Boom, drops on the stage. We sure scoops him up in his arms and he holds him. He just says, oh, tell my mum I love her. Something like that. We'll find it. Great. Not a dry eye in the house. I wish I'd thought of that. August. Do you want the bad news or the fucking bad news? I'll give you both. Still nothing from Harry Styles. You're weeks away, you got no singer. And what's the fucking bad news? The biopic you filmed, the one that cost 10 million quid. Oh, no, did one of the actors turn out to be a nonce? I bet it's that geezer who played Mature. I knew he looked dodgy. No, it's not that. Your film is devoid of nonce, for now. The problem you have is a lot more serious. What's more serious than a nonce? You cannot use any Spandau ballet music in the film. Ah, oh, that's bollocks, John. I composed all the songs, we performed all the music. You do not own the rights to use the tracks. The publishing is owned by you, but the physical 24-track master tapes belong to Carlson Media, who bought up about 50 record companies last year, including yours. Don't you read my emails? No. Well, Carlson Media are aware of your film and want $15 million to loan you the tapes. That's more than the movie cost. You can't have a Spandau Ballet movie without Spandau Ballet music. Some people might prefer it. Why are they being so unreasonable? Because a certain twat in a box ignored my advice, wrote a whole chapter in their latest memoirs about what pricks they are, remember? Who? Everyone at Carlson Media are a bunch of yank robot Dalek I hope they die in a volcano mistake. But hang on, we need the 24-track master tapes so we can mix the surround sound. What are we going to do? Only one option, you do a Taylor Swift. You completely re-record all your albums. That's how she got around the same problem. Seven albums? That's going to take months. I wouldn't bother with the last one. Harsh. To re-record their albums from scratch, the band are reuniting with their legendary producer, Luke Dunmore. So what was it like working with Spano Ballet? How would you describe the personalities? Have you ever seen Dud's Army? No. Well, that analogy's not going to work, then, is it? All right. All right, lads. We're the first, are we? Your first day, yeah. OK, good. Nice to see you anyway. Good yeah, you, mate. Yeah. Not changed. Hang on, hang on give, give me a couple of minutes, cos I've got one of Ross's star messages. Oh. Here we go. What? Hello, Luke. It's Martin Kemp. I have a message from your old pals Tony, Steve and John. They say that they never want to work with those Bell End brothers again and they hope that their film dies a death. Lots of love, the better half for... The better half of Spandau Ballet. Christ. What? We've been set up. They've gone on Ross's stupid website and made mugs out of us. No, I mugged them off. They gave me 85 quid. This is a $10 million movie going down the drain and you're thinking about 85 quid? Yeah, well, 85 quid means a lot to me at the moment. You lads, come on. Don't start. You... Don't start, lads, come on. We're going to have to get some session players. No, no, we're not having session players. This is Spandau Ballet. We can auto-tune it. Auto-tune? Where's your pride? I mean, what are we going to do? Hey, 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 hey. I've got an idea. We break into the archive and steal the masters. I know the place like the back of my hand. Practically lived there when I was digitally remastering Lulu's back catalogue. We go in, copy it, put it back. Nobody will know we've been there. Can we do that? Why not? They stole the music from us. We're just going to borrow it back from them. Right? It's ours anyway. The masters are all stored in a climate-controlled chamber, nuclear proof. So we break into the archive, right? We locate the 24-inch master tracks. Then what? There's a tape room on the first floor. I'll meet you there. There's an old machine that I can kickstart. We plug the laptop in. We're laughing. In real time, 24 tracks, seven albums. It's going to take all night. What about security, CCTV, the access codes? Leave that to me. Luke said me at number five. Yeah, five. All right, lads. Hey, hey! I love danger, mate, don't you? I've been feeling like a right middle-class swat. I woke up this morning, thought I was Felicity Kendall. But I've got hold of this cat, right? From Ghana. Right, African salad. Buzzing off it. Do you want some? That's a bay leaf. What? You bet it's drugged up as a spag bowl. Lying drug-dealing bastard. Right, come on. Let's do it. Here we go. 
nets. What are you wearing? Pepsi's fish nets. Why? Well, because Shirley's other ones, they give me this yeast infection. I can see your face through that. I'm not doing a robbery with him dressed like a tarts arsehole. I'll keep me head down. Oh, come on. Yeah, right, let's go. What did he do that for? You weren't supposed to hurt anyone. You said no violence. Burnage, you lying bastard. I've been from ABC to ZZ Top. I can't find him. Oh, he's got me here somewhere. Oh, wait here, the Smiths. Notice yourselves. Sparks. Mark has bought Specials. No, I'm saying This is it. Smandau Martin. Oh, right, we've got him. Now let's get him copied. Here you go. Lift it, lift it. Got it. There you go. That's it. I don't need this pressure on. I don't need this pressure on. I bought a ticket to the world. Oh, turn around and I'll be there. A few hours later, and all the master tapes were copied. Okay, let's go. Go, 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 come on. Open it up, open it up. You better put them back. Come on, let's do it. Come on. I can't believe we got away with this. Fuck! Shh, shh. You've dropped through. That is so precious. Your soul is in that tape. Be careful. OK, OK, I know. That's it, slowly. <laughs> Oh my god. Ah, ah. That's your baby. That's you. Uh. Go, 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 go. Get out! Oh. I'll see you in another 30 years. Let's go. You'll be all right, mate. Can I interest you in a bit of baby? With the biopic complete, the Kemps have returned home excited to see the progress of Gary's Spandau Valley project. However, things haven't gone as planned. What's happened? They've done nothing. Where are they? Who? Oh. The builders. I ain't seen them since you left. What, not once? That's three months ago. Well, they left all their equipment here, the cement mixer, sand, ladder. Right, OK. You know, the number isn't going through. Right? Every time I send a text, nothing happens. You didn't give him any money up front, did you? Of course not. Well, then he hasn't done a bunk, has he? I mean, that's the oldest trick in the book. Is it? Yeah. Cowboy builders, right? They ask for a lot of money up front, and they leave you with some old cheap cement mixer, so you think they're coming back, but they never do. How do you know? I played a cowboy builder once in a Lindell plant. That is exactly what happened. So, Gary, why did you tell Martin that you hadn't paid the builder any money, yet we've got footage of you handing him a suitcase full of cash? It's all in there, the cash. Sweet. Are you embarrassed because you made a fool of yourself? What are you going to do about it? Gary. 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 This week on Watchdog, we received a plea from Spandau Ballet star Gary Kemp. Gary was ripped off by a cowboy builder called Paul Human, and Kemp is urging viewers to be vigilant. Mr. Human, whose whereabouts are unknown, promised to convert Gary Kemp's stables into a ballet theatre, but he ran off with a deposit and hasn't been seen since. He was last spotted at Border Control in Amsterdam. This rotter ran off with £150,000 of Kemp cash. If you see him, do not approach. There's every possibility that he's a massive bastard. October, and the long-awaited Spandau Ballet movie is finally released in cinemas all over the world. But only this man came to see it, and he had the time of his life. It's day one of rehearsals at the Festival Hall. In just a few weeks from now, Gary and Martin will be live on BBC One, rocking in the new year. However, they still don't have a lead singer, and time is running out. Morning, all. 
That was Harry Styles, manager. He's finally confirmed. What was that? Spandau Harry. It's happening. Shit. What? Just tell him we can't do it. Why? Oh. I was the oldest in Croquis <laughs> Christmas lights with Francis Rossi from Status Quo. And, uh, well, we had a few milkshakes afterwards, and oh, the man's a monster. I sort of, um, promised him the gig. You can't cancel Harry Styles now, you drainpipe. Call him, tell him it's off. Too late. Morning, guys, how are we? Should we get on with it, then? So the plan is to use the New Year's concert to launch the new band and a stadium tour in 24. Yeah, I've been thinking about that, John. I don't really want to do stadiums. I think we should do theatres, you know. It's more intimate. It's better for the fans. Oh, fuck the fans. It's Dosh you want. Pack them in like chickens in a Chinese battery farm, charge the earth. That's the way to do it. No, yeah, I agree with him. I'm not even on a health kick. He said, I hate the freaking fans. Keep them as far away from me as possible. Smack on. Billing, what are you going to call yourselves? Well, I was thinking Spandau Ballet featuring Francis Rossi. Are you taking the piss? Featuring? Am I a karaoke competition winner or something? No, Francis Rossi featuring Spandau Ballet. Then we just sound like your backing band. Well, you are, aren't you? Well, we're supposed to be equal, right? <laughs> you wish. 120 million hours, mate. Nah, you ain't made that many, have you? Oh, you plonker. That's how many we sold. Oh. You've got to get the brand names in. That's what counts. Yeah, all right, what about, um... What about status ballet? Nah. All right, this is better. Ballet quo. No, that's worse. Spandau quo? Yeah. Well, as long as quo is in fuck off big letters, I want 20% of the ticket sales, 90% of the merch. I'm not singing any their ballady bollocks either. I'll do two of your tunes and the rest of mine, right? Sold. My oh, man. It's December at Kemp Grange. With Christmas just around the corner, Gary and Martin are getting into the Yuletide spirit. Here you go. What do you think? I didn't want to say anything before, but I get a really weird feeling about this, Gav. I don't think any of us are going to make it through in the new year. Really? We well, see upstairs in your bathroom, there's that little circle in the beam with a flower in it. Yeah? It's a witch's mark. A witch's mark? It's there to ward off evil. I used to have this girlfriend. She was into Wicca and black magic. She was a Wicca bitch. I don't believe in any of that. It's all rubbish. Yeah, well, you just look at the evidence. You got the builder to run off with all your money. You've lost all your wives. The film's gone tits up. Are you telling me that Satan ain't got his hooves all over this? Here, look. Have one of these. What is it? Early Christmas present. 
garlic tablets, seven C's. Wards off evil, don't make your sweat stink. Merry Christmas. It's just one day to go before the New Year concert and Francis Rossi has some ideas on presentation. Morning, guys. Right, I was thinking your stage gear's shit, innit? Let's face it. So I've been down to Peacocks and I got you a bit of kit. See what you think. It's for you. That's for you. Really? Waist coat and jeans. Ah, that reminds me. You're here. You're here. You need a ponytail each. Jean, waistcoat, ponytail, cracked it. Well, we ain't got time to grow one of those. Ah, don't worry, you can have a couple of my old... And Martin were wondering if you might be singing at any time. No, my voice is my fortune, mate. I, I'm not going to waste my nodules on a friggin' empty room. So, no, I'll save it for the night, like it, or lump it. Not interesting. Francis really wants all the Spandau Ballet songs to sound like status quo. <laughs> Actually, it's a bit of an improvement, if you ask me. Oh, oh, oh. Okay, now. So, what you're gonna do to whatever you want over it? Uh, whatever you want. Okay. Uh, okay. okay. Yeah. Touch you. Yeah. Afternoon, all. Got some very good news for a change. Ooh. Not only have I got Span Now Quo half time at the Super Bowl and a stadium tour for 24, but got a very interesting email from Buckingham Palace. Somebody in this room has made the King's first New Year's honours list. Alan Cumming <laughs> sent his back. So there's one going spare for a certain Mr. Kemp for their 40 years service to music, for their charity work, for being an all round decent bloke. Congratulations. Sir Martin Kemp. No! Uh, no, you're, you're joking, right? This is a joke. Yeah, where's my bleeding knighthood? Well, what's the joke about this? They must have got the wrong Kemp. Is there, is, there, is there a typo on there or something? No, no. It definitely says here uh, Martin Kemp. Kemp, yes. I'm the one who should be the nobleman who queued up for three days to see the Queen's coffin, eh? You fell asleep on the embankment. You didn't even make it, you missed it all. Who paid for Princess Anne's polo pony to get a new pair of metal shoes? This ain't my fault, is it? You know, I never asked for this. I'm a knight of the realm, and I ain't sucked up to nobody. Concert's off, okay? I'm not doing this. You do it yourself. Do you think I'll get one of those jousting outfits? See what I can do. Yes! I am! A fucking night! Gary, 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 do calm down. This is not a good look, and I'm not talking about your ponytail. Just pick up your toys, get back in your pram. I cannot believe I am going to be a knight. I'll tell you what, if my dad knew, he'd roll over. You're being childish. Lads, 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 lads. Can I, can I, I just want to have a moment with my brother? Thanks. Well, you calm down now, have you? No, I'm sorry, OK? You know, I am pleased for you. Yeah, go. you know me better than that. I'm not one to chase gongs, am I? But, you know, it's nice to get a gong every once in a while, you know, especially a regal gong. Listen, before I call the palace and accept on your behalf, just want to make sure that you definitely want to accept this gong. Of course I do. Why wouldn't I? Well, some artists might feel it's not very... Cool? I don't want to be cool. I want to be a knight. No, fair enough, fair enough. It's just a knight of the British Empire. It's a bit of a poison chalice these days, isn't it? I mean, nobody wants to be seen as a white guy who loves empire. Yeah? I mean, that's why Suggs turned his down. Suggs got a knighthood. What for? Services to two-tone. But you want to reach a new audience, don't you? And with one of you being part of the establishment, it might make you seem a bit out of touch. I mean, British Empire built this whole country on the back of slavery, pillage and child labour, but if you could live with the fallout, then crack on. I'll tell you what, John. You call Buckhouse, you tell them they can stuff their honour. I don't want it. Right, you can. You sure? Yeah, of course I'm sure. What do you think I am, stupid? I could have got well cancelled. 
It's just a few hours until Spandau Crow rock Big Ben in front of a live TV audience. Come on, girl, hurry up. We get stuck behind a tractor, we're gonna be fucked. I'm coming. What's going on? You're, you're trending on Twitter. Anyway, it says you're on the news. No, leave it. Come on, we better go. What are you we doing? better go. Come on. What's wrong? No, it's broken. The TV doesn't. Get off. Palace has announced this year's New Year's honours list. One of the recipients included Spandau Ballet's Gary Kemp. I've always loved the British Empire. It's a, it's a great honour to get this gong. Mr. Kemp accepted the gong after his brother Martin Cow. reportedly turned it down. Please for me. You told me to turn my peerage down, didn't you? No. So you could get one. No, no, you turned it down, so they gave it to me. No! John was in it with you. That knighthood is mine. You told him to turn it down. You told him to do it, didn't you? Who pays you your 10%, Hey, eh? My songs, my publishing. You get me a knighthood, or this relationship is over. You told no. me all that shit about the Empire. No. You told me you... No. you... No. The police. What are they doing here? It must be about my builder. I won't forget this. Afternoon, sir. PC Dolan from the Rural Crimes Division. This is PC Gibb. Afternoon. Mr Gary Kemp. Sir Gary Kemp. It's pending. Wanker! Sir Gary Kemp, I am arresting you on suspicion of criminal activity. What? Do you want me to cuff him? He never cuffed the white ones. What's going on? Mr Martin Kemp, I'm yeah. arresting you on suspicion of criminal activity. Mate, what have I done? We'll explain down the station. You don't understand. We are doing a concert on BBC One live tonight. We're rocking in the new year. Well, you're you rocking go... anything until you've answered a few questions down the station. Well, take long, sir. No, I don't even know what this is about. Honestly, if you're going to... Hang on a minute, there's a baby seat in here. Yes, yeah, no. criminals are getting younger, so... How'd you do this? This is stuck. It's a bugger, that. Can we just get going, please? You go in the front, he can go in the back, you drive, I'll walk. Come on. Where, where am I going? You can what? go in the front. Well, be careful with that clutch, sir, because it does tend to tug a bit, it sticks. I can't drive a manual. Well, you'll have to try. Go one, two, three, it's simple. I'll drive, just get in the car, we've got to go. Meanwhile, back at the concert venue, tensions are running high backstage. Oh, where are they, John? I don't know, they're not answering. Oh, this is bollocks, isn't it? In it. Trina and I better break it. We're only borrowing the tapes. Just leave all the talking to me. I have been on all sides of the law in my TV career. Judge, jury, executioner. Bungles Police Station, PC Dolan and PC Gibbs are entering the room. I wish to plead diplomatic immunity. You should release us both right now. What are you doing? I was in a Linda LaPlante once, gal. Just leave it to me. I wish to plead diplomatic immunity. You should release us both right now. My apologies, sir. You are free to leave. Impersonated diplomat's criminal offence. Another charge. Shit. Well done. Look, c c can we get this done really quickly? Because we're on stage very soon. We have reason to believe that you are linked to a major pollution incident involving the rivers. Major. There's this. Oh. And this. And this. But this has got nothing to do with and me. And this? This is my brother, Ross. Sir Gary Kemp, as CEO of Wange Enterprises, it is your responsibility to make sure the goods are disposed of properly. And that's not all. Petroleum by the gallon load being dumped in the waterways. No, that is not petrol. That is weed. A weed into a petrol can. You won't let me piss on the grass. I have got really pure urine, right? I've got what? Four kidneys. I'll give you a sample. Oh, we'll take a sample, all right, Mr. Kemp. We're going to need a solicitor. I demand a phone call now. I did that in a Linda LaPlante once, too. So. I demand a phone call now. <sighs> Your phone, sir. Just the yeah. one. Happy New Year, Wendy and Ray! It's Marty, Kim, your boys, Dean and Justin. They're so sorry they can't be with you tonight, but they just wish you a happy and healthy 2024. Have a great one! What? You don't want to call your solicitor, or...? No. How much do you charge for that? 85 quid. Hmm. Couldn't do one for me, could you? Yeah, of course I can. Go on. It's for my nan. Yeah. 
John, it's Gary. Get your carcass down there now. You're making me look a chump. Who do you think you are? Naomi fucking Campbell. We're waiting. Come on. Shit. Look, can I have one more? Nope. Uh, man, there you go. It is Marcy Kemp here with your girl. Look. <laughs> Hello, Dad. Having a lovely little New Year's Eve. Happy New Year, Dad. Love you. Hey, love you, Nan. Hey. <laughs> Cheers, mate. No, no problem. Here, hang on. John, Let's you've seen this. Vandal Ballet stars Gary and Martin Kemp have been arrested by Norfolk Police. Shit. I couldn't get through. Yeah, me neither. Mr. Kemp, time for your urine sample. Could you give us one from the back end as well, please, sir? What, in the same tub? Use this. Soft scoop. I can't work with criminals, John. Shit's gonna stick, innit? I'm gonna see if I can get on the hoot nanny with Jules Holland. See you later. I don't blame you. Fuck it, I'm coming with you. What about the audience? I got the perfect replacement. Hello, hello, hello. Happy New Year. I got a job for you. Festival Hall. Now. Ooh, oh. I was supposed to be at a party tonight, New Year's Eve. Down the Thatcher's Needle, they got bands on and everything. Do you have anything planned? Yes. We were meant to be rocking Big Ben. If he hadn't been so constipated, we would have been out of here by now. Tested the samples. He's right. pH 7, pure than mineral water. See? Wait, well, you're free to go then, on bail. Right. Oh, uh, on one condition. Could you fill that baby up for me, please, Martin? I'll look the other way. I won't. And at the stroke of midnight, the bonds of Big Ben will ring out to signal the start of the New Year fireworks. The countdown is underway. What time is it? 12. Oh, shit, we've missed it now. Oh, the door's open. <laughs> Hello, lads. How'd you get in? Lockbox, remember? My life is ruined because of you. All my jobs have been cancelled because you started a hate campaign. No one will talk to me now. Friends, family. You disappeared with my money. No, I didn't. I fell off your roof on day two and broke 80 bones in my foot. There isn't 80 bones in a foot, so you're a liar. There is, gal. I played Shropodist once in Father Brown. We make a good team, Father Brown. And your feet are impeccable. You weren't answering your phone. There was no one at your address. My mum died, all right? Oh, no, she didn't, did she? I had to drive all the way to Holland with a broken foot. Well, it's too late for me now. I've lost everything. So I'm going to join my mum, the woman who melted in this spot, and the witch in the pond. And guess what? You're coming with me. No, 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 no! no. It's a witchy smile. <laughs> <laughs> Happy New Year. Oh. Where'd you get that can? In your shed. It's not petrol. What is it then? Oh, I'm all wet. You don't want to know what that is. I'm sorry, lads. I don't know what came over me. It's gone midnight. Let's go and see who's rocking in Big Ben instead of us. Oh, yeah. Welcome back to part two of Rock Big Ben, live with Tony Hadley. Always believe in your soul. He's the best one. Wrote all the songs. You really should, boy.